the second uh, part of the lecture series of disease informatics in the first part we talked about why uh, disease uh, biology has to be linked with the information technology and why uh, disease biology is, uh, you can say is uh, very much famous in bioinformatics studies and why bioinformatics how bioinformatics can help the uh, disease to be identified diagnosed you can say and to be cured or to be prevented from further prevalence there are so many things to be discussed but uh, i try to be more simplistic and more uh, specific with some examples so that you can have an idea that how the data available in, in the public data sets can help you to uh, understand the disease more clearly and in the first part we talked about different types of data data for example there you know there's a central dogma right from dna to rna to protein so different types of dna data sets for example mutation data is some point mutation insertion and deletion data of some some regions and the copy number variation which um, comprises from a few nucleotide uh, a few kilobase pair segment to the whole mega base pair or whole chromosome region variation that means that there is some copy of the region has been deleted or amplified and then there then that was uh, the next part is obviously from dna when there is a disruption in dna it moves to rna and rna expression and uh, we talked about that uh, rna expression data is also very important to be uh, this uh, to be analyzed not for a specific gene for the whole transcriptome or the genome right so in, in this part of the uh, lecture we will see that how the data is available and how biologists can possibly uh, identify their question of interest or their interest of data set and how they can analyze that information using uh, very easy uh, computer approaches because by, uh, we know that biologists are not very good at dealing with the big data and also this is not only specific to the biologists because bioinformaticians today uh, also uh, should be aware about uh, should know about the types of data sets because mainly uh, the bioinformation bioinformaticians think that we have to do a lot of um, de development and programming and try to identify new uh, solutions new tools try to develop new databases but dealing with the data right now to analyze the data is big, becoming a big bigger challenge every day you have heard about different types of uh, different types of you know different news news regarding that now the biggest resource of 21st century is the data it's not oil it's not something other very expensive because there are so many things which we can take out dig out we can understand from the data and bioinformaticians these days are I, I i believe that they are not fully aware about the significance of dealing with the data right so that's why i made this slide that the publicly available data is waiting for the biologists there's so much to be seen there's so much to be learned and but uh, unfortunately we are lagging behind so i'll go through some of the uh, some of the data sets as uh, some of the data which is available and how we can access that data in the first uh, now from starting from this slide this uh, paper uh, this uh, uh, paper has been t taken from an article which was published in nature reviews in 2013 by Rao Chaudhary and Simon and uh, uh, this is actually these are different types of different types of uh, uh, NGS next generation sequencing based math techniques which generates a lot of data just uh, just like I've discussed with you that commutation data copy number variation data expression data right and proteins protein data as well so if we go through one by one just to uh, I, you have an idea about what this what these different techniques mean and how they generate a lot of data right so uh, we will not go into the uh, big de uh, detail of each um, platform because it's not our uh, main agenda. The main purpose is to understand how, which, how many types of data are available. For example, if you can see here that this first one is the first one is the whole genomic data. This one, oh, sorry, Let me make it here. 
whole genomic data and the whole genome data contains predominant applications of this are structural variations, point mutations and copy number variations. So, st from structure you can just mean that it means that the whole chromosome, uh, chrom it is not about a protein structure, it is about the structure of the chromosomal region. For instance, there is a translocation or chromosomal rearrangement of the whole genome that in this figure it is uh, referred to that. And then point mutations, we have discussed that one point change can leads to the mutation which can disrupt the whole a gene and then pathway and then the function. And then uh, copy number variations, this term was has been also discussed, there is another type of uh, variation in that DNA level that whole genome, uh, genomic region has been, a whole chromosomal region or half the chromosome re chromosomal region is deleted or amplified. Then there is this one, this um, uh, you can say a whole exome you can clearly differentiate between whole genome and exome, right? Whole exome only means that the point mutations, for instance, the, uh, sorry, the point uh, mutations, copy number variations in exomic region, that is the exon, that is only the one part of the whole genome, one percent of the whole genome. So, it is different from whole genomic region. So, there are a lot of significant uh, um, reasons of particularly focusing on this, this whole exome part because that depends on the question. For instance, we, are just wa we just want to look for the coding part of the ge genome that how that is disrupted, how there are different types of uh, mutations uh, will uh, occurred in that exomic region and how the copy number variations are you know, acting in that exomic region we do, uh, in this. So, they, they, they may not have the interest of dealing with the intronic parts or gene deserts or all the different uh, genomic region except the coding part. So, uh, this is uh, another ex application and it generates these two types of data. Then there is a PCR amplicon, again it has uh, amplicon sequencing, it has uh, its predominant applications are point mutations and deletions of the regions. Then there is transcriptome, now these four were for the DNA and then this is for the, this fourth one is for the RNA, particularly specifically only for RNA, here you can see that transcriptome means transcript and the whole, just like the gene means a gene and the whole genome means the whole genome, the whole set of the gene, genes. And the, again here transcript means a transcript of some spe specific segment and transcriptome RNA means that the whole transcriptome of the one individual or the genome. So, the applications of this are gene expression, gene fusion, splice variants, you know the splice, uh, splice site variants term, I think we are not here to talk about the basic biology again. Gene fusions uh, when the two genes are joined together or fused together, that can also be detected by transcriptome RNA sequencing and the gene obviously the gene expression, the overall expression of the RNA. Then the last one here is the exon capture transcriptome sequencing right and then that again the same applications for this uh, exon capture transcriptome are gene expression, gene fusion, splice variants. So, now uh, I, I do not have to go into the de uh, details of each application how it works because it is not uh, it is beyond the scope of the course. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, you can go into the the, the article which is published. Uh, this oh, it published this uh, figure that is published in Nature Reviews in 2013 by Roy Choudhury. Then how these different sequencing techniques uh, detect to be uh, to be to make it as simple as possible for the biologists and the bioinformaticians. This uh, again, this is a very interesting article. It was published in Nature Reviews, Gastroenterology and Hepatology by Mardis. And uh, according to this, you can see that sim in, sim in very simple words, how they detect different variations. What does variation mean? That mutations, copy number variations, translocations, chromosomal inversions, deletions, whatever, right? So now you here you can see that at the first row, with the reference sequence of chromosome number one of a genome, right? So, reference means uh, to whom we refer our data. Then, in the uh, head, uh, these, these are the sequence reads which have been detected using any of these four or five different 
methods and according to the reads when this the se sequencing whole genome for example whole genome sequencing technique detect or generated all these different segments then these segments are you know compared or aligned with the reference genome to identify that whether there is any difference at any site between the uh, uh, new genome which we are uh, sequencing and comparing it with the reference genome and yes from that comparison we identify that okay for example at this side you can see that uh, in the reference genome at this side there was A but when we compared it to our genome for example when they compared their genome with this side they identified that at, at this position there is not A there is a C. So, this clearly says that if this is a disease patient, there, there is a high, the, at this point there is a mutation that, uh, compared to the reference genome. Again, the insertion deletions mean small size. Here you can see that small fragment is deleted. So, that, that's just by the alignment. Then there are homozygous deletions and hemizygous deletions. I hope you know the difference between the homozygous deletions and hemizygous or heterozygous deletions. Uh, homozygous means you know that there is a uh, every gene has two alleles right the copies of in, in at two alleles and if the both the copies are deleted of a gene on both the loci then that is called homozygous deletion that both copies are deleted if there is one copy is deleted and one is intact then we say that it is a heterozygous or hemizygous deletions then there are Gain. So yeah. So again, you can see that when they then there is a homozygous deletion. Then when we will compare that with the reference sequence or align that with the reference sequence, it will show no reads at this site. So it clearly means that there is no sequence uh, sequence available, and we can say that it's a homozygous deletion. And if the number of reads are comparatively lesser than the normal number of reads, we can say that there is a high possibility that the, any algorithm or any uh, method can predict that there is a heterozygous or one copy deletion and if the uh, the number is when we compare it with the normal genome the reference genome the number in, uh, is increased uh, potentially increased compared to the rest of the observations then we can say that there is a high possibility of a amplification at this site and again, if there is a random region which is identified, which is not uh, which is not part of the chromosome number one, uh, then we compare. Then it compares with the whole genome and try to identify that whether this part of the genome or in this disease patient came from any other chromosomal point. If they and they can find if they find that point in any other chromosome, then they say that this region is has been uh, has a gene fusion at this site or this site has been uh, this location ha has this translocation has a break breaking point at this site compared to the chromosome one and then uh, we also the co it can be compared with the non-human sequence for instance now we know that pathogens viruses just like different viruses we are dealing these days we can compare that with the non-human sequences and try to identify the regions which are not actually bound with the human chromosomal reference sequence. So these are different uh, conceptually, I just wanted to share with you the conceptually how they try to identify different types of genetic variations in the big data. We cannot do it one by one or we cannot do it uh, by our own to identify each change easily. So uh, I think now it's clear that these are different techniques and, the, uh, and conceptually they try to identify different genetic variations using this methods. Now moving towards the next part, now we directly jump into the different databases which contains all this information of different cancer genomes or disease genomes and uh, just I said that uh, the big publicly available data is waiting for the biologist. So really if you, if you haven't heard of this uh, this name the cancer genome atlas then you are lagging behind in the field of cancer genomics because this cancer genomic atlas database has has characterized different types of cancer sites and approximately 67 primary cancer sites and uh, 
these are only 67 primary cancer sites and the data available of these cancers I, uh, as, uh, as far as I remember it's more than 28, 29,000 tumors of whole genome transcriptomes are available on this database and for example essays these essays include how is the DNA is changing so that's why they did DNA sequencing mostly exonic and then copy number variations and then how the expression is different RNA sequencing micro RNA sequencing you know the difference between the RNA and micro RNA micro RNA is a non coding part and that, that regulates the gene expression and again extras uh, there are other things as well that methylation methylome sequencing you know methylation acetylation and uh, these are being detected by methylome sequencing and then clinical annotation of each patient so there's a mo almost 30,000 genomes of cancer patients are available with all this information of all those 22,000 genes in one genome so you can see that uh, that it contains the whole lot of data set and I, if I just search this for your understanding for example this is the the link where you can go and you can identify or you can learn about your for example this is the cancer genome atlas database and this has this is affiliated with you know the Can National Cancer Institute of United States and this cancer program if you can see here that the cancer genome atlas program is a landmark cancer genomics program molecularly characterized over 20,000 para primary cancers and matched normal samples spanning 33 cancer types so I have mentioned there 37 maybe from okay if so there should be a portal right and at that portal you can go and you can publicly available okay here it's written publicly available if you click it GDC portal yeah this is the portal where you can find all the data available for different cancer types and this is a huge amount of data and you, you can start from anywhere using this information for instance here you, uh, uh, the heading is that harmonized cancer data sets genomic data, data commons data portal you can see adrenal glands bile duct bladder cancer blood cancer bone bone marrow brain breast cancer cervical cancer ovary prostate any type uh, available and it, in tabular form you can see that his total uh, uh, project of uh, um, uh, 65 projects and primary sites of um, uh, uh, 67 primary sites and then uh, the there are uh, cases of 84,000 cases and then files of 57, 570,000. So you, if you just see the numbers, the 22,000 genes and, and you can clearly see that this whole data is, is increasing on in every day, on every day basis. So we have to be vigilant enough and we should realize information, uh, we should realize the significance of data and we should uh, we should realize the significance of these information technology solutions like bioinformatics and databases and programming languages so that we can integrate our biological information using this uh, bioinformatics approaches and come up with the new solutions and new ideas and uh, oh